Hello, good morning, afternoon and evening, wherever you are. Good morning, after eve. This one's about leadership. I'd like to look at leadership from three angles. One is using the image of the sword, symbolizing purpose and direction and, um, and where that fits into leadership. And then using the image of the shield to symbolize the protector provider energy in the masculine and how that fits into leadership. And then thirdly, use the image of the, of the pen to look at intelligent creative action, how that fits into leadership. So we'll look at three different aspects of purpose and direction, providing and protecting, intelligent creative action, and how these all fit together and blend within leadership as expressed through healthy masculinity. Let's get into it. So first let's look at sword energy, which is a word using this to symbolize the energy of purpose and direction within masculine energy. So a leadership takes many shapes. It can be in the form of a bold, courageous leader in a, a dynamic, warlike situation. For many people, leadership takes the shape of being an influencer on the social networks as an increasingly common form of leadership. The key with leadership is where are we being led and where is the intention and purpose of the people leading us? Because of course that determines where we end up if we follow this person and their influence or their leadership. Many influencers nowadays, many leaders nowadays, their motives aren't always necessarily clear. Are they? So it behoves us to sit back and look at a particular leader and think, well, where's this person leading us? What, where does this person want to lead me? What are their motives? What outcome do they want for themselves and for society and what will be the outcome for me if I follow them and sometimes the motives of the leader may be mixed and part of the thing with an influencer is do I want to be like this influencer or do I want to be influenced by them to become more like them or or perhaps a better question is to ask oneself to what extent do I want to be more like this particular person or at least do I want to be more like how they present themselves as being and we all know that, at least I hope we all know, that to a large extent that an influencer representing themselves online is an idealized version of themselves. You're not getting the whole story. In any situation, we've got a choice to either express or to be following some kind of quality of purpose. Are we following a noble purpose or are we influencing others to follow a noble purpose? Because in a way, we're all influencers to some shape or form. It could be influencing through our behavior or our words and deeds or by cl clicking on likes. Um, the things we choose to click, click on the like button for, providing social proof for those influencers, for those leaders, or the people we're choosing to follow, we're providing social proof. Social proof is where by giving something attention, then this is noticed by the networks, which then offer that same material to others adding our weight, our vote for that direction and for the, the influence that this leader is offering. And so it behoves us to also look at where are we lending our support, what values are behind the, the leadership of this particular person and long term is that for the greater good or there may be good values but are there higher or better values or other people who are offering higher and better values where we would rather in the longer term provide our weight and support to. You know, more people pay attention to a particular influencer then the more the information offered by that influencer is offered to others. If we spend a lot of time and attention in a particular influencer, it's more likely their content will be offered to others. So a lot of the time we're online, we're offering support and uh, social proof in a way, we're all influencing each other. We all have a certain of influence, even if we're only just absorbing material provided by others. We're all, in a way, being an influencer, so we're all, in a way, being a leader. And we're all, in many ways, leaders to someone. Usually, we're, we're all influencing or leading someone. Some... <laughs> this is something that is worth looking at and thinking, well, am I leading in a way or influencing a way that is beneficial, that it's something I really want to be behind and that I really want to be happening. And um, 
So the thing about leadership, it, it's the more effectively we're clear about where we're leading and where we're influencing, then the better and more effective our leadership. And the more conscious we are of the fact that we're leading and influencing others in some shape or form, then the more deliberately we can use that to good effect rather than influencing people in ways that are unworthy or unfortunate that we, we wouldn't want to be influencing them. And then we can become really aware of, well, how am I influencing? How am I affecting the other people in my life? What is, what is my influence on other people? When is it beneficial for them? And when is it not beneficial? When is it detrimental to them? So the whole thing about leadership isn't just about people who are choosing to be leaders necessarily. It's, it's an issue for everyone. And what can help is if we've got some kind of sense of strategy. In any given situation, usually our intention is really simple. It's either to hurt or to help. One good principle then with leadership is to say, well, what is my intention with what I'm doing? Am I seeking to help a situation? or to help a person, or am I seeking to hurt a situation or hurt a person? So this helping or hurting uh, is often a really nice, simple way of figuring out the <laughs> effect we're having. Because uh, if we're acting out of anger and consistently acting out of anger, then we're giving our vote to the things that are based on anger. Like if we're watching a lot of material that's based on anger, then we're giving our vote to angry material. <laughs> Um, I mean, it's not just our vote, the networks themselves have got their algorithm that reigns back certain types of content, so it's not a level playing field. But nevertheless, are we giving our weight, our vote, our leadership, our, our offering our social proof to things that we want to see spreading? And usually we do it instinctively, but looking at the big picture, just how much of that do we want to spread? How much of it do we want to be getting out there? Well, is there something, some other things that we would rather we lend our vote to, that we're lending our energy to, so that it spread, that it would be more beneficial for society and more beneficial for ourselves to focus on, and that gets down to our values and what values we want to be expressing. That now comes back again to this issue of is our intention to help or to hurt? Who do we want to help and who do we want to hurt? It's usually much better to focus your energy on somebody or something you want to help and not get caught up in people or situations you want to hurt. But where can I actually help? Where can I be constructive? You know, there's a rough rule in life which goes something like, if you don't have a strategy, all you'll get is a tragedy. And that's particularly true with any expression of leadership. We're all in a way leaders in some shape or form or influencers in some shape or form. So it can be really good to look at, well, what, what's my, do I have a strategy for this? What would I like my contribution to the energy of life be, to the pool of life on the planet at the moment, uh, to the pool of activities? What's my contribution? Like if there's something strategically I would like to contribute to, or if it's a beneficial thing, so I'm assuming it's a beneficial thing to the overall good of society, or at least a section of society, then how can I get more deliberately behind that? How can I help that more? How can I help those that are taking the lead on that? Or how can I take the lead on that? So that's the sword energy, the energy of purpose and direction and looking at whether the way we influence and the way we act and the way be we behave is lined up to the kind of core purpose and intentions we have in life. And if we don't have some kind of core purpose intention, then see if we can come up with one or follow somebody who does. And then that becomes our purpose and intention. And then later on, we might see, well, how can we express our own initiative in that particular field and express those values and express values that are important to us in how we live our life. Now, the shield energy. Let's look at shield energy and how it expresses itself when it comes to leadership. So usually if you're taking the lead, you've got a team or there's people behind you. <laughs> At least you hope there's people behind you or there's people you're wanting to influence and so the shield energy is the protecting, providing part. So if somebody's leading, usually, as I say, they've got a team, and so they have to take care of the team. They need to make sure that the, the members of the team feel like they're part of a team. 
to create a team spirit, to create some kind of team energy. So there's a feeling of working together on something, on acting together on something. So the protecting and the providing is providing the resources the team need, making sure they've got those resources, and also networking within the individuals to create this team building, sense of connection, sense of working together in the team. So that's obviously a really important part of leadership. Even if you're just leading yourself, you know, just being a solo influencer or a solo leader in a given situation, then you need to lead yourself. You need to get the different parts of you working together to harmonize and prioritize what's really important. And so you don't get distracted by things that are not so important. And it's the same with a team of individuals. You've got to make sure that they're focused on what's important and prioritizing what's important and not getting distracted by things that are that are not so important. So we need to do a bit of both of getting a priority straight with ourselves and getting a priority straight with any team we're working with. And that's to do with communicating those priorities and nurturing the skills and capacities in our team, nurturing the skills and capacities within yourself, especially with our team of one, <laughs> and to become more effective in whatever goal we're trying to achieve. And that brings us to the pen energy because that has a lot to do with the skills and abilities. It's the, so the pen is symbolizing intelligent creative action. Assuming we've got a purpose and direction, assuming we've got some kind of sense of a team, even if it's just us as the, we ourselves are the team, to somewhat getting our act together. Um, so we're, we're prioritizing around what's important and then looking at how to most effectively go about this then. We've got particular goals and objectives and a purpose. How can we most effectively use our energy to achieve that? That might mean developing new skills or finding another team member and nurturing that team member to bring them online and supporting them and um, giving the team members the support they need to fully function well. And, and also a sense of timing. So we may have a really good purpose and a good sense of direction, but what's the timing of this? Is, is now the time or do we need to break it up into sections and do it in phases? And one phase is dependent on another or maybe we can be having multiple ob objectives going ahead at the same time. So those three working together, the sword energy, having a clear and specific purpose, the shield energy of nurturing the team or our own skill set, looking at right timing, what's the best timing and what are the phases, phases or stages we need to go through to achieve the goal and how can we go about it in a smart way, not bearing our heads against a wall. And that can feed back in itself in a positive way and it may, we might need to clarify our purpose, we might need to work on the team members and we might need to be smarter about what we're doing just as we go along depending on the results we're getting. So those three, they all work together to create a good leader. Whether we're a leader of one or whether we're a leader of a many. I hope you find this useful and I've got some other videos on the, or the sword, the shield and the pen and all work together within the Healthy Masculine. So check them out if you're interested. Be you, be your best, be your best self. You're awesome. Go for it.